Hello everyone, this is Sanjay Parashar. Welcome back to the channel. And today is the second part of our error handling in Oracle SOA series. In our last video, we learned a generic way to handle all type of faults in Oracle service using catch all. We also learned what are the different functions that we can use in order to get some information of that particular fault which is coming in our flow. Today we'll dive a little deeper into the concept of fault management in Oracle SOA. We will see what is catch, when catch needs to be used, what is the best practice to use catch all, what is throw, rethrow, and the difference between these uh, different activities and flows. So let's start. So as you can see on my screen, these are the two services that we demonstrated in our last video so if you have not seen that video yet i highly recommend you guys to first see that video and then come to this video so this is the service uh, error handling demo service which we are going to tweak the code in order to produce an error handle that error and get the response back and this is the hello web service which we have shut down at the moment because we in our last video we created a remote fault by calling this service and shutting down this service. So as you can see in the code, this was the code that was there where we handled that remote fault using the catch all activity. Now the catch is needed when we want to handle a certain type of fault or certain type of error. For example, this uh, remote fault only. Suppose we have a situation, a requirement where we want to do something else when a remote fault comes and if any other fault come, for example, selection failure, binding fault, anything of anything that is other than the remote fault at that time, we want to do something else in catch all. So to give us that sort of leverage, catch and catch all can be used in parallel in parallel uh, with a particular uh, flow. So as you can see, here is an option for add catch. So I want to catch a remote fault. So as you can see in catch all, there is no configuration needed. You simply put catch all and whatever the fault that comes in the flow, it will come to catch all. But now if we add a catch to it, then we'll have to give a system fault, a particular system fault that needs to be caught with this catch flow. For example, this remote fault, we want to catch this remote fault here. You don't have to define a fault variable here. It usually comes in handy. You can, Oracle documentation recommends that you define a variable, but it's not a uh, mandate practice. Even if you don't give any variable at all here, it is fine. It comes in handy when you create a custom fault and then you want to catch that custom fault altogether. That also I will uh, let you guys know later on so let's catch the remote fault and we'll give a different message in this uh, catch so just to save some time i'll just copy this sequence from catch all and put it into this catch here and we'll give a different response so as this says fault name has been handled in catch all block let's say fault has been handled in catch block let's save it and let's deploy it in our previous video also if you guys remember uh, the remote fault came when this hello service was in shutdown state so we'll try to recreate that scenario we'll call error handling demo service and we'll see if the remote fault goes to catch all or it goes to catch so the service is deployed Let's test this uh, error handling demo. John. Because the calling the reference service was down, it threw a remote fault and it has been handled by catch block as you can see. So if there was any other error other than remote fault then that would have gone to catch all and now we will prove that particular theory also 
So now we know why is catch needed and why is catch all needed. Now there is an activity in our people which is throw in order to throw a particular fault whenever we want whenever we want the transaction or the flow to go from the main transaction to a fault uh, management system be it catch or catch all we can use a throw activity so if you type here throw so we can drag and drop throw into this and let's say I want to throw a binding fault or to make it a little bit more interesting let me just put a if condition on top and let's just say if the user is entering name as John then we want to we want a remote fault to come if anything else then we want a binding fault to come so this will be easy for us to demonstrate catch and catch all and throw both so now let's just say if whatever user has sent is john with j capital then we want to throw a remote fault so now rather than depending on that web service call let's throw a remote fault using throw activity itself so like catch we have an option to add a system fault here also otherwise let's throw a binding fault As I said, fault variable, you don't have to really give a fault variable here unless you want to give a customized message, message within the fault that you're throwing. Here it's a remote fault. Here it's binding fault. These labeling are not <laughs> mandated, just it looks good. So. Now let's just understand what will happen. If we'll give input as John, then catch block should be executed. If we give anything else apart from John, then catch all should be executed. This will prove our theory, how catch works and how throw works. Okay, so let's deploy it and see what happens. All right, it is deployed. Now let's test it. So if I give John with J capital, and if the, there is someone with name John watching this video, this is just for the demonstration purpose, please don't mind. So we'll test it. So at this moment it says handled by catch block because of course we are sending a remote fault as you can see right now let's give something else let's give james now this has been handled by catch all block so now we know how catch and catch all works and what are different errors that you can throw using uh, the throw activity also however as of now we have only used the system faults that are already there in the in, in the list of system faults there you can create your custom fault faults also now there is another activity that can be come in handy that can come in handy uh, is rethrow so when when we will learn fault handling framework using fault binding and fault policy at that time rethrow plays more significant role 
then using these out of the box options that we have for catch catch all throw and rethrow however in this rethrow is basically throwing the same error within the flow to the to the subsequent catch or catch all block so if i just drag and drop this rethrow here and i show you guys it also does not have any configuration to configure that which sort of flow we want to throw so to demonstrate rethrow we'll need to create a couple of more scopes in here because if the flow comes here it will throw it will rethrow will never be executed and if i remove this and i put rethrow in front of this then this would not know that what exactly the fault what exact fault do i need to throw that's the reason it says rethrow so in here let's just say we'll create a scope inside that scope let's have a catch now inside that catch let's have this uh, throw fault so now here it will receive it it will send a it will throw a remote fault and it will come to this catch now inside this catch i can use a rethrow activity if i don't want to handle this error at this moment and i just want to pass it along to the next block rethrow same fault and here we'll need to define it that it is handling a remote fault so remote fault will come here this will catch it and then this will rethrow the same fault and it should be caught it should be caught here so that's what the flow should be in this rethrow does not really play a very significant role at this moment but in fault handling framework it does play a significant role that we'll cover once we uh, once we go through that fault handling framework now either you use this rethrow or you can use throw also but you'll have to configure that it's a remote fault that you're throwing this tells that whatever the flow whatever the fault is there in that flow right now I, i'm just throwing that let's deploy it and see how how it works All right, it is deployed. Now let's test it. So now you can give whatever you want because that logic we have written new logic on the top of that logic now. That name logic that we wrote. <coughs> so as you can see, remote fault in catch block. Now we'll have to go to that flow. to basically understand what exactly happened with this flow now if you see compiler came here and this threw a remote fault which goes to the catch which was assigned to this scope now we rethrew the same so if you'll check in the code we have not configured anything in the rethrow but because in this catch the remote fault was coming it threw the same thing same fault and it came here for example if we would have thrown binding fault here and handled binding fault here then it would have thrown the binding fault itself rather than uh, remote fault so that's how it works the whole picture i tried and use uh, as simple examples as possible so that because these things sometimes becomes a little bit complicated for people who are just starting with the with the technology so now that's how it works catch catch all throw and rethrow in this now as i mentioned there are ways you can create a custom fault also and throw a custom fault catch a custom fault you can do that also using these activities only so we'll cover that in the next part of the same series
so if you have any questions related to what we have covered in this video please feel free to let me know by either emailing me or by commenting on this video uh, till then take good care of yourselves and have a nice rest of the day bye bye